Imagine you're hiking along in the woods, when suddenly you smell something putrid. Or perhaps you hear a long whooping noise. Startled, you look around until your eyes settle on something massive and covered in dark hair. Although partially hidden among the trees, you can just make it out. Is it a bear? Maybe a moose? Perhaps, but it looks like neither, and more like a giant ape-like humanoid, covered in hair. Before you can make sense of what you're seeing, the creature disappears into the woods, leaving you awestruck and dumbfounded. Such is an experience many claim to have had. Bigfoot, a North American legend. Bigfoot, or Sasquatch, as it's called up north, is the king of North American cryptids. This giant, hairy humanoid has captured imaginations for decades. But where did the legend begin? The year is 1958. A logger named Bull Boone stumbles upon a trail of massive footprints near Bluff Creek, California. These weren't your average bear tracks. These were colossal, measuring 16 inches long and seven inches wide. Casts were made, the story hit the papers, and Bigfoot fever began. The name Sasquatch actually comes from the Halkamalam language, spoken by indigenous peoples of the Pacific Northwest. It translates to hairy man, reflecting centuries-old legends of a giant, hairy being in the woods. Interestingly, Bigfoot sightings often overlap with these traditional stories, suggesting a deep-rooted cultural belief. The creature is primarily associated with the dense forests of North America, particularly the Pacific Northwest. This region stretches from British Columbia in Canada, down through Washington, Oregon, and Northern California in the United States. There are several ideas why these places are Bigfoot central. Dense forested habitat. Bigfoot sightings are concentrated in areas with thick forests, offering plenty of cover and seclusion. The Pacific Northwest boasts towering evergreens, dense undergrowth, and plenty of remote wilderness areas for a large creature to hide. Mountainous terrain. Bigfoot is often described as a large, powerful being. Mountainous regions, with varied elevations, could provide Bigfoot with challenging terrain for traversing and diverse ecosystems for finding food. Many indigenous cultures of the Pacific Northwest have stories of giant, hairy humanoids. This alignment between folklore and sightings adds weight to the theory that Bigfoot might reside in this specific region. The absolute highest concentration of Bigfoot sightings comes from the Pacific Northwest. Washington State alone holds the record for most reported encounters, suggesting a higher population density of Bigfoot or at least more enthusiastic Bigfoot watchers in this area. However, Bigfoot sightings have been reported across North America, from California to Michigan, and even as far east as the Appalachian Mountains. This indicates that Bigfoot, if it exists, might not be restricted solely to the Pacific Northwest. Perhaps these scattered sightings represent smaller, isolated populations, or individuals with wider roaming territories. Descriptions vary wildly, but Bigfoot is generally thought to be a bipedal creature, towering between six and nine feet tall, 
though some accounts reach into the realm of giants at 15 feet. Their fur is said to be dark brown, reddish, or even black, and they may emit loud howls, screams, and even knocks. Another recurring observation is a foul odor whenever Bigfoot is present. This has been described as a wet dog smell to roadkill. Not only is Bigfoot purportedly large, but also incredibly strong. Before the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980, loggers recounted a strange occurrence. Large metal drums containing tools or supplies vanished from remote logging sites. These drums were very large and quite heavy, filled with equipment or fuel. The disappearances were always accompanied by strange, oversized footprints near the vanished drums. There were never any signs of the drums being broken into or tampered with, suggesting they were simply carried away. Bigfoot's diet is another mystery. Some believe they're omnivores, munching on berries, fish, and even small mammals. Others think they might be herbivores, feasting on vegetation, with even some suggesting they hunt wild game. Without any concrete evidence, it's anyone's guess what Bigfoot likes for breakfast. The biggest game changer in the Bigfoot phenomenon came in 1967, when Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin captured what is arguably the most famous Bigfoot, Evidence, a blurry film of a large, hairy creature walking through the woods. The Patterson-Gimlin film has been debated for decades with some claiming it's a hoax, and others convinced it's the real deal. Not all Bigfoot experiences are limited to seeing footprints or catching a quick glimpse of the creature. One incident, in particular, was quite personal. In 1924, Albert Osman, a seasoned outdoorsman, ventured into the remote wilderness near Tober Inlet, British Columbia. Despite local tales of hairy giants, Osman dismissed them as campfire stories. One night, while in a deep slumber, he was startled by a terrifying experience. According to his account, a Sasquatch, a massive ape-like creature, scooped him up in his sleeping bag and embarked on a three-hour trek through the unforgiving terrain. When the journey ended, Osman found himself deposited before a family of these creatures, two large adults and two smaller ones. For six days, he remained their captive. Though understandably frightened, Osman claimed they never harmed him. He even described a rudimentary form of communication through gestures. Eventually, Osman was able to escape, but would be forever changed by his encounter with the elusive Bigfoot family. This one might raise some eyebrows. Some Bigfoot researchers and enthusiasts believe there's a connection between Bigfoot sightings and UFO activity. There are several reasons for this. Overlap in hotspots. Certain areas with a high frequency of Bigfoot sightings also have a surprisingly high number of reported UFO encounters. Places like Mount Shasta in California. A fringe belief holds that Bigfoot might not be an earthly creature at all but rather an alien species that crash-landed or established a hidden outpost on Earth. Is it far-fetched? Most likely. There's no scientific evidence to support a Bigfoot alien connection. 
However, it's an interesting twist on the Bigfoot legend and shows how some researchers approach the phenomenon from a very unconventional angle. Despite countless searches, expeditions, and even casts of supposed Bigfoot footprints, no definitive proof of the creature exists. Yet, Bigfoot remains a captivating enigma. Is it a clever hoax, or a real undiscovered species? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind, or maybe lurking in the woods. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this video entertaining. We're a small channel that would appreciate your support. Please hit the like button. Also, let us know what you think in the comments below. Best of all, subscribe and help us grow.